During the last decade of the 19th century, African Americans were a vibrant part of Wilmington's culture. African Americans had established themselves not only as a vital part of economic life, but soon to be part of the political arena. The election of 1894 saw a well-established political campaign designed by populists and Republicans. Populist Marion Butler and Republican Daniel Russell created the Fusion Coalition, and by the 1894 election, Fusion candidates defeated Democrats statewide and gained control of the General Assembly. Local elections also saw Democrats defeated and replaced with Fusion candidates and even black community leaders. The mid 1890s political atmosphere began to change in North Carolina with the election of Governor Daniel Russell, the first Republican governor in North Carolina since Reconstruction. The state legislator of 1897 made large changes to Wilmington City Charter. Local white leaders were dissatisfied and angry with the changes. During this time, Wilmington's black businesses grew at a faster pace than any other North Carolina city. In 1897, over 1,000 African Americans owned some sort of property in Wilmington. The city's African-American population was enriched by schools, wealth, and inherited status. Months before the election of 1898, the city of Wilmington still had a black population that was a majority. Leading up to the election, the city was occupied by the Democratic Party's white supremacist movement. Democrats were certain that an intimidation campaign filled with white supremacist propaganda would tear apart the fragile connection between whites and blacks in the Fusion Coalition. The White Government League, led by Alfred Waddell, introduced a powerful line of intimidation to white Republicans and African Americans. The Red Shirt Brigade, established by Fernifold Simmons, had spread throughout eastern North Carolina and its strongest contingency was in New Hanover County. In the fall of 1898, the Red Shirts held racist rallies, disrupted African American church services, and walked the streets of Wilmington with weapons. Along with the White Government League, they distributed flyers and political cartoons depicting blacks as corrupt and detrimental to white society. Facing hatred and intimidation, African Americans still turned out in large numbers on Election Day. However, the extremely large volume of Democrats outnumbered the Republicans and populists. Although there were reports of ballot box stuffing by white supremacists, overall, Election Day was peaceful with little unrest. Motivated by their victory, on November 9th, 25 white men met at the courthouse. They listed their demands on the African-American community and presented the white man's Declaration of Independence. They demanded the immediate removal of Alex Manley and his newspaper, The Daily Record, from the city. Additional resolutions called for the resignation of the mayor and the chief of police. On the evening of November 9th, the Committee of Colored Citizens was called to hear the demands of the white supremacist. In attendance was Alfred Waddell and his Committee of 25. The Committee of Colored Citizens drafted a humble response and attempted to separate the black community from Manley and his newspaper. Preceding the riot on November 10th, Alfred Waddell scheduled a meeting at the Light Infantry Armory to receive the response from the Committee of Colored Citizens. 500 additional white men were also present. The response never came, and Waddell used the fury of the crowd to his advantage. He led the angry mob to Manley's newspaper on 3rd Street. During the procession, the crowd grew to almost 2,000 people. Upon reaching the newspaper office, the crowd destroyed the printing press and burned the building. The violence spread throughout the city. African Americans gathered weapons to defend themselves as whites patrolled the streets searching for blacks to carry out Waddell's claim to choke the Cape Fear River with Negro carcasses. At around 11 a.m., near the intersection of 4th and Harnett Streets, in the mostly black community of Brooklyn, a gun battle broke out. When it was over, several African American men lay dead or wounded. This moving gun battle continued to Manhattan Park, a gathering place deep in the black community, where bullets destroyed the surrounding fence and damaged many homes and buildings. During the violence and gunfire, Waddell and other white leaders demanded the resignations of the mayor and board of aldermen. Waddell was elected mayor by a new board of aldermen who had been appointed by a small group of Democratic leaders that afternoon. Within hours of Waddell assuming power, all black employees were fired or replaced. 
Waddell and his posse issued warnings to African-American economic, religious, and political leaders that if they did not leave the city, they would face physical harm or even death. Some African-Americans hid in the surrounding woods for days and even weeks. The African-American casualties of the Wilmington race riots were not allowed to be buried at Wilmington's Oakdale Cemetery. They were laid to rest at Pine Forest Cemetery, a 15-acre graveyard established in Wilmington for colored residents. When the violence subsided, the official death toll was 25. However, it was strongly suspected that hundreds of African Americans had been killed and their bodies dumped into the river. Large numbers of African American families fled the city to find safer homes. Many relocated to communities in Brunswick County. Blacks who remained or came to the city after the Wilmington race riots faced severe racism and large reductions in pay. Democrats regained control of the governor's office in 1900 using similar tactics in the 1898 Wilmington elections. A suffrage amendment to the North Carolina state constitution was passed and virtually eliminated black voting rights and concreted segregation that lasted until the civil rights movement of the 1950s and 60s. On November 8, 2008, the city of Wilmington, along with predominant white and black leaders, dedicated the 1898 Memorial Park in downtown Wilmington. The center point of the memorial are six large bronze paddles that symbolize water, an important element in the belief system of people from Africa. Water is also part of a diversity of beliefs throughout the world to symbolize renewal, rebirth, and forgiveness. For a city that grew up beside the waters of the Cape Fear, these paddles symbolize a type of passage as well.